And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace, the love of God, Father, and Son, and Spirit, be with you now and always. And with your Amen. spirit. I'm sure I should introduce myself as we begin. My name is Father Bob Byrne, a retired priest living over with a, a group of other retired priests on the other side of the city over on Mount Pleasant Avenue. The pastor fell during the week, and so uh, isn't up to celebrating the Mass with you today. Uh, and I'm filling in. And wonderful opportunity to see and meet another uh, family of God here on the other side of the city. And to take a step forward as, in our commitment as Christians, in our belief, and in our action. Both of which, I guess, as we begin Mass, we can admit a feeble, a belief, our action, our commitment. We ask God to give us strength. Lord, again today, you've given us the gift of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to give us life in its fullness. Christ have mercy. 
Good and loving God, may no earthly undertaking hinder us as we set out in haste to meet your Son Jesus. May our learning, your heavenly wisdom, gain us admittance into your company. You live and reign in the unity of the Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him as peace. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. <laughs> Uh, 
without uh, a pulpit in front of me. Once upon a time, I was a missionary in Chile. In the last parish, there were 41 chapels spread throughout the Indies. And they were just little chapels. And so I get to you know, spend about those years uh, close to the people. And I hope to be able to bring the word of God a little bit clearer to you uh, on this beautiful day. I was here last night, and you know, Dr. Fauci's been saying we're going to have a long, tough winter. Well, it certainly began last night with the terrible night it was. The, the few valiant came from Mass last night and uh, struggled to get home again. But after that terrible night, we have a, a beautiful day. The promise, I guess, according to the weatherman, of a few more beautiful days. And so it is the world in which we live. Beautiful, but it, it's not. But there is the promise of something beautiful because the spirit of the living God that Mark just told us about is alive and well here. And that's the beauty of the message. At the very beginning of the book of Apocalypse, there's the letter of John to all the various churches that he had heard of in those years. And to each church, he kind of wrote to them, kind of jumping off of the reality that they were living, to try to help them to take additional steps toward uh, putting that gospel of Jesus into practice. And I think that's what happens with us. As Sunday by Sunday, we gather together, and the Lord asks us to take another step in our commitment to Him, to His Word. And in the providence and in the world today, we're faced with some very special challenges as each age has its challenges. I checked the news this morning and there were 14 additional deaths of the virus, 14 of our sisters and brothers, and 14 families who were mourning, the majority of them unable to be with their, their dying. I heard the story the other day of a woman who was coming out of the, the hospital and uh, in the parking lot next to her, there was a woman that had the window down. And she was there sobbing. So before she got into her own car, she said, to him, Gee, how are you doing? Can I help you? She said, well, she said I'm, I'm a nurse. And for the fourth time this week, I had to hold the hand of a, a dying person. And with the long hours of working, it just overwhelmed me. And you can see how that means so. And some of you, some of us, I'm sure have gone through something similar. It's a tremendous moment of challenge for our human family, for our Christian family, for, for us as well. As it is with people of the world, I happened to be in India just before the lockdown and saw the reality of the people of India. Now with the virus, you can only imagine what it must be like. We're on the, the back end, unfortunately, in the back end of the Black Lives Matter uh, moment of conscientization for us after 400 years of injustice. That's part of our Christian lives as well, isn't it? And, and with the virus, all the, the unemployment that's happening in the poverty, especially with uh, those who don't have all their papers in order, who you know, don't qualify for subsidies from the government. And so we live in a very complex and a very challenging world. And I guess it's for us not just to echo, oh, gee, isn't it too bad, cross our arms, but to look at the scriptures today and say, well, no, 
what is the Lord calling us to? And in that first reading from Isaiah, he said, well, comfort my people. Give them, give them hope. Be like a shepherd that feeds his flock, gathering the lambs. We want to approach all those in our lives with that kind of care and concern, compassion that the Lord has for us. That means it's Peter told us to live lives that are filled with holiness and devotion. Not just devotion to God, but devotion to all our human family, especially those who are poor and suffering. I bring with me today a little booklet that I uh, just got in the mail. The title here is On Fraternity and Friendship. And it's by Pope Francis. And it's about how to be a brother, sister in our human family. And how one nation and another can really be part of this human family as a brother or sister nation. In, uh, you might have seen something in the paper about it in the Italian, the title is Pratelli Tutti, Everybody's Brother. Maybe a good title would be to brothers and sisters all. And in the book, he gives us a vision of what it really means to take this gospel of Jesus for this complex world of today and for our lives as we're drawn here and there with fears and anxiety and hopes and dreams. And the Pope's dream is that we respect each and every human life. Each and every. Regardless of all the differences there might be. And so as each of us living in this world of today see all these various challenges, I'm sure that in some ways each of us would be able to respond in order to really respect more in our thoughts, prayers, words, and actions, the human life of uh, each person. We're brought up with a virgin of Christianity. I was speaking to a man the other day in uh, uh, Situate, he lives out in the country. I was out in Situate with him. And I guess the reason he said he moved to uh, Situate was that he wouldn't have to have Negroes across the street. He had gone to Catholic high school, but that part of faith didn't penetrate him. And so each of us, faced with challenges, something like that, whether in our own hearts and souls and lives, or people we know. The Pope, and toward the very end of the book, having talked about our respect and the dignity of each person, talks about the death penalty. And I'd like to spend a moment with you speaking about that because tomorrow the federal government will execute, supposedly will execute a woman who was mentally ill and been mentally ill for years and who suffered tremendous abuse. Her name is Lisa Montgomery. And um, a terrible, tragic, tragic story that led up to a murder and now 13 years in death row. She'll be the first woman in 70 years to be executed. And she was mentally ill. I, I wrote a, for the first time, I wrote a, a letter to the, the president yesterday asking that he might show compassion for her part of her. I was surprised how easy it was to put in the White House contact and in a minute I was able to compose a little note expressing that dream, that desire, 
that, that wish for the respect of this poor, the poorest of the poor human person. That might be a step that many of us might be able to take. So first for me at this stage in my life, maybe it could be a first for you at this moment in your lives as well. We want to bring comfort to people. As the, the Gospel said, uh, John was the messenger, saying, I'm not worthy to loosen the, the thongs of his sins, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit is calling us, not only to feel that, but to put our Christian lives into action. And that's all seen. This morning we'll be professing our faith in the form of questions. To each question I ask you to respond, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, set the death and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. John the Baptist called to repentance reminds us that the day of our redemption is at hand. We trust in the comfort that God can give, and we turn in humble trust to pray for the needs of the whole world and for our own needs. That the life, preaching, teaching, and ministry of our Holy Father and all the bishops of the Church may be a living sign of turning away from sin and leading all people to do the same. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men and women entrusted with authority will work together honestly and peacefully so justice may flourish in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in this season of preparation, we may hear the Lord's invitation to repentance by receiving the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people will work together to control the spread of COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our families will increase in the knowledge of what is genuinely good and valuable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus will come close to those who are ill, especially those with COVID-19 and those who care for them. Jeffrey Bate, Patricia Law, Dr. Vincent A. Armenio, Alan Valenticonis, Carmine Ray, Belle Valenda, Sister Mary Paul, Kathy McGinty Radke, Samantha Poland Short, and all those for whom we have promised to pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, pray our prayer. That the faithful departed may see the salvation of God as they enter his kingdom, especially all the deceased of our parish and our families, those who are dying because of COVID-19, 
and Margaret Peggy Corrigan, for whom this Mass is offered on the anniversary of her death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our As we await new heavens and a new earth, we bring to God our personal intentions. Let's pray for the homeless that they have a roof of their room, a bed to sleep in, a table to eat on. But then we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's pray for peace and Montgomery, for the fullness of life today and for many days to come. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Oh God, we bring uh, you, we long for salvation given to us by Christ. Let we lay our petitions before you. Keep us faithful to you during this Advent and through all our lives. We ask in the name of Jesus who lives forever and ever. Amen. Amen. way to salvation. 
when he comes again in glory and all that last is made manifest, we who watch the dead may inherit the great promise in which today we dare to hope. So with angels and archangels, we sing the hymn of your glory and without end we acclaim
as you've gathered us at the table of your Son this morning. Bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Sebastian and all the saints, with all our sisters and brothers of every race and tongue, and with those who have died in your friendship. Today we remember Peggy Carter. Bring them all to share in the unending banquet of unity, and a new heaven, and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
body of Get the Pope's book. I think 
think we all had a chance to read it, our, our minds, maybe our lives, would be significantly changed for the better. And let us pray. Our Lord, we're going to be punished by the school of spiritual nourishment. We ask that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of this earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. We ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us today and always. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.